What's up everyone, it's Caddy with Money Resting. Market's very, very flat and slightly down here all in the day. We've got lots to unpack in this video. So make sure that you drop a like if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel if you are new here. And the link to our Discord and Patreon is gonna be down below if you're interested in joining us. And uh, again, there's limited spots left. It is the first week of the month and it's usually the best time to join. Our trade ideas have been literally playing out picture perfectly. So this is going to be Johnson & Johnson continues to move higher after hours. It was up another 3% on that almost $9 billion settlement, got up to as much as $163 and our target was $168. So it was a little bit on the optimistic side, but we are slowly and steadily getting up there. And that's been a very nice 9.5, close to 10% trade. Another one that kind of blew past the target was Eli Lilly. This trade is also over. We got up to as much as $359 per share. Some sellers stepped in to bring us back down. And now it's obviously getting a little bit on the overbought side. So this trade idea is also over. And then of course, finally, Vertex doing really well, almost getting up to our target at $323. Alibaba, we already know, did really well earlier last week when it gapped up pretty significantly and got up to as much as $104, $105 per share. And of course, not to mention TMF on the day was up another 1.78%, continues to move up back over nine bucks per share. So again, if you want to get access to all these trade ideas, I will be releasing a brand new video for April with three to four different quality setups very soon. Uh, link's gonna be down below if you're interested in joining us. So first things first, uh, the economics calendar. We're gonna come back to this because it is a really, really important headline. But first things first, economics calendar, we do have the ADP employment numbers coming out tomorrow, as well as the uh, International Trade and Goods and Services and the ISM Services Index. And then of course on Thursday, we've got the jobless claims, we've got the Fed's balance sheet, and then on Friday, we've got the actual employment situation with respect to the unemployment rate, average hourly earnings, all those things, very important for the market. This is how the Joel's numbers came out today. This was supposed to come out at 10 a.m. Eastern and it did and we dropped pretty aggressively at 9.9 .9 million job openings in the US and that's down from 10.8 million. That's a lot of jobs being reduced in the market and if you take a look at the Joel's number and compare it to the unemployed persons, that ratio right? Vacancy to unemployed persons has now come down to 1.66. This number has been trending lower from about two. So from two, it came down to 1.8. Now we're at 1.66. So that simply means the labor market is not as strong as what it used to be. And there aren't as many opportunities for employment as there used to be last year. So Joel's numbers coming down, not, not the best sign for the labor market. And I think in my opinion, we it's possible that we do see a bit of an uptick in the unemployment rate once Friday report is released. Now, this right here is from Paul Sankey. Uh, if you don't know, Paul Sankey has been one of the top energy analysts uh, on Wall Street, and he is expecting crude oil at $100 could be soon very, very the new normal. And, uh, you know, reading further, he says the new normal for crude oil could be $100 a barrel. And Sankey ranked number one by institutional investors for energy independent research in 2023. And even in the past, I think a lot of her calls, as, as much as I paid attention, have been very much on point. Um, but he says, and I quote, global oil production capacity really has a problem. I mean, we really only have growth in Guyana outside of OPEC plus and almost nothing else to speak of. And uh, saying he said he doesn't believe the economic slowdown will impact his bullish outlook. He pointed to the start of a driving season, U.S. refineries coming back online and natural seasonal demand as other factors that could boost prices. So he does believe $100 is or could be the new normal for oil. And if you take a look at where we were, you know, we are now sitting at over $81 per barrel after the supply cut from over the weekend uh, of over 1 million barrels per day and obviously pushing it higher quite substantially and now crude sitting back over $81 per barrel. Brent is now back over $85 per barrel. So this is going to put pressure on gas prices. This is going to put pressure on inflation, something that we absolutely need to pay attention to because you know a lot of things are driven by how oil prices are doing, right? Everything in the economy is driven by how oil prices are doing. If gas prices are high, goods and services, general goods and services prices will also be higher because it takes a lot of resources, a lot of oil to transport goods and services from one place to another. So if that is included in the cost for a lot of these producers, for a lot of these sellers, 
then yes, overall prices also get an upwards revision, unfortunately, in that scenario. So pay attention to oil. It's going to be very, very important. Another thing, which is a bit of a blind spot, which I mentioned in my other video from yesterday was commercial real estate. So if you notice, there was a report from Goldman Sachs economist Manuel Abacasis and David Merciel. Again, I'm apologize for the mispronunciation there, but more than 80% of all commercial real estate loans are now held by banks with fewer than $250 billion in assets. And these loans now comprise of the highest percentage of industry portfolios in 13 years. And there's a lot of commercial real estate that's been financed over the last few years. Uh, and when you raise rates super quickly, the interest rate sensitive parts of the economy, and particularly where there's financing or leveraged attached to it, that's where you create stress. And that's not going to go away tomorrow. And uh, this is, uh, you know, the the overall level of the uh, the ramping of the commercial real estate loans following the Great Recession. You can see that we were, you know, at uh, roughly around negative eight, negative seven percent back then, and we have now got up to over seventeen point six percent. We're pretty much at the same level as where we were almost at two thousand six, two thousand seven kind of years leading up to the Great Financial Crisis. And Signature was among the bank that made the most. Uh, of some of these bets, becoming an aggressive lender in New York City to office owners and multifamily properties. And by the end of 2022, it had amassed nearly $36 billion in commercial real estate loans, half of which were apartments. And that portfolio comprised nearly one third of its $110 billion in assets. Uh, reading further, there was, there was one more thing that I wanted to go over before we jump into the markets here, which I don't seem to have here, because what that really mentioned was that we have close to, uh, anyway, we have close to $1.4 trillion of these loans coming in due in the next five years. And I think it was closer to $200, $250 billion worth of loans coming due this year. So there is going to be some, you know, potential cracks in commercial real estate that everybody needs to be paying attention to as well, because that could really drive uh, some economic weakness uh, in the future, in 2023 and 2024. But that number was $1.4 trillion of these loans coming due in the next five years. Something to pay attention to. So the markets here, markets pretty much uh, selling off. The S&P was down about 58 basis points and NASDAQ was down 52 basis points and the Dow Jones here dropping 59 basis points. So all three indices down about half a percent. Um, and the market losses followed the latest job openings report in February. The number of available job positions dropped below 10 million for the first time in nearly two years, a sign that once a hot labor market supporting the economy is now starting to slow. And Yardini Research from Ed, Yard Ed Yardini from Yardini Research says, and I quote, there's still plenty of job openings relative to the unemployed and the market is very sensitive to any minor changes in the direction that they don't want to see. And uh, yeah, that number has been decelerating now. It's come down from two to down to 1.66, uh, that ratio between unemployed to uh, to the number of vacancies available. So S&P 500 closes lower Tuesday and the Dow S&P 500 snapped four day winning streak as economic worries loom and live updates here. So this is going to be the market's heat map. Industrial, energy, everything selling off as well as financials and banks, semiconductors, so NVIDIA for a change was down 1.8%, Micron selling off, AMD was down as well. Uh, Amazon did well, Meta did well, Google was pushing higher, Microsoft, Apple were pretty much flat, and Johnson & Johnson and Eli Lilly, those two were the trade ideas outperforming the market. They were both up over 1% on the day. So these are literally what we shared with our members as a potential trade idea, and Johnson & Johnson, not to mention, was up another 3% after hours. So again, congratulations to anybody who did get the chance to trade these. And don't you worry if you missed out on these opportunities, I will be sharing more trade ideas. There's always more opportunities. And my goal, my objective is to really share them with you. So this again was the state of the market. Alibaba also pushing higher 2.3% outperforming the market. Another one of our trade ideas. And uh, like I said, Amazon was very green and the entire market was overall selling off because industrials, financials, semis, basic materials, all of them were pulling back. So utilities ended up performing really well. Uh, everything else was down in the last one week. We still have all 11 sectors in the S&P 500 green. And over the last one month, we've got comm services and technology and defensive pushing higher. Everything else is slightly lower. And orange juice for the win. It's leading the way up quite a bit. Cocoa prices, lumber prices, gasoline, heating oil, ethanol, 
all of them pushing higher with lean hogs down about 2%. And Bitcoin still doing really well up over 28,600 and Ethereum is on a rally here. It's on a mission back over $1,900 at the moment. So going back over to the market, crude oil, I've already mentioned, but this is going to be an important resistance level at close to around $81, $82 per barrel. Volatility was slightly higher. Uh, it was up a little bit over 2.5%, so pushing back over 19 levels. So keep a close eye at around 20, all the way up to 23, 25 levels. And of course, we've got a decent level support uh, at around here because we have bounced off of that 17, 18 levels for the VIX in the past. Bitcoin here just consolidating sideways. However, it is now starting to make a move back higher. So back over 28,600. So lots of consolidation here. And the next resistance really is going to be all the way up to 32,000. That's going to be a level to watch. And we've also got Ethereum charging higher, continually seeing some more momentum. Next target and resistance is going to be at $2,000 for Ethereum. That's going to be the level to pay attention to. So now we come over to the S&P 500 and something that we have talked about, right? So this is an area of resistance. RSI, MACD, not exactly overbought, but we are approaching the bear's territory, right? This is the bear camp where there's a lot of supply sitting. And every time we get up to that level once, twice, three times, four times, this is the fifth time the S&P 500 is kind of testing this 41, 4200. It's kind of testing the waters, so to speak, to really kind of feel out how is the price action in these areas. And right now we're still not able to consistently kind of see that momentum to the upside. Of course, uh, you know, employment is going to change the picture for this week. We'll find out what the ADP numbers look like tomorrow. We'll find out the uh, jobless claims. We'll find out the Fed's balance sheet and, of course, the unemployment numbers on Friday. So that is going to really dictate where the markets uh, markets go here remainder of this week. But right now, we're still kind of getting inside this red rectangle, which is an area of resistance for us to focus on. And today, we were slightly down about half a percent, trading right at 4100 NASDAQ, a very similar situation. So we are at a resistance now. So after consistently three to four green days, we are now starting to pull back slightly uh, 12,000 uh, under 12,200 down about half a percent. And again, the RSI MACD, not incredibly overbought, but we are definitely coming off of some serious gains here. And uh, again, we have gone rejected at this level, not once, but twice and even three times. So this is the fourth time for the NASDAQ that we're testing this level at 12,280. So these are going to be the ones to watch very closely. Uh, next up, we've got Apple. And Apple here on the day was, uh, again, starting to come down a little bit. We are at this lower high. So this is the lower highs and lower lows for Apple. So we're still in the context of this overall very, very brief downtrend for Apple. Not to mention the RSI and the MACD are incredibly overbought. So be careful, be cautious. Again, I'm going to give you a realistic picture, which is to say that every time the RSI is overbought, we have seen a pullback for Apple stock. And considering that we are hitting a lower high, it's not unlikely, it's not uncommon for Apple to pull back, maybe come down to 157, 158, um, and then kind of recalibrate from those levels, whether it starts to push back up or it gets a breakdown. But in my opinion, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it does see a pullback, comes down to this level, retest the support, and then starts to make another way up, uh, back up to potentially 177. But from these levels, we are overbought, so I wouldn't be surprised for us to see a bit of a pullback here. Talking about Amazon, uh, same thing. We are now starting to approach a little bit of a resistance here. So we are still in the context of this consolidation pattern inside this box, so to speak, where we are just trading sideways and we are approaching this lower high. If you zoom out a little bit, you'll notice that this lower high is in the context of this overall downtrend, uh, you know, coming down lower highs and lower lows. So that is a very important level to watch for Amazon all the way up to as much as 115 in line with this resistance where we have gone rejected more recently. So that lower high is going to be the one to watch. RSI and MACD are not exactly overbought here, but you know those are going to be some levels to pay attention to for Amazon. Tesla was down another 1%. So coming down to a little bit under 193, it actually traded as low as 190. Uh, my cover calls are now up over, I think, 45, close to 50%. Just a little bit more, a little bit more, and we'll be up close to 75, 80%, at which point I would be happily closing them out. Uh, but this right here is going to be that support level to pay attention to for Tesla. And as we have already mentioned, and I talked about in my previous video, that right now we are seeing a lot of consolidation for Tesla. We're just going sideways at the moment in between that range where there's a resistance sitting right over here in the 220s, 225, and a support level sitting right at the bottom in the 160s to 170s for Tesla. So, so this is gonna be that range within which Tesla continues to trade resistance a little bit on the upside, 
support and a little bit on the downside and all we're really doing is going sideways uh next up we've got nvidia and nvidia here starting to pull back a little bit we did see a 1.83 percent drop uh again rsi overbought macd is overbought so just be careful we have been drifting higher on lower and lower and lower volume as you can clearly see the volume has not been anywhere close to what we used to see back you know in 2022 or 2021 but of course nvidia continues to charge higher just all i'm gonna say is be cautious here i've been trimming a little bit so last week i did trim half uh or a little bit over a half of my position so actually close to three-fourths of my position is gone and now i'm only holding on to a very very small amount of nvidia and we'll be looking at you know just locking in profits for those two resistance is going to save it at 292 dollars. so this right here is going to be that level to watch for for nvidia and uh again support level is going to be down in the in the 200s low 200s down in the in the hundreds as well Talking about advanced micro devices and AMD now, again, losing steam, right? So it's not really moving up as aggressively as it did before. And right now we're just consolidating sideways. And what we're really seeing is a bit of a lower high over here and a lot of consolidation sideways at this sort of uh, support. So you can kind of argue that this is a bit of a descending triangle, but then the overall pattern kind of looks a bit of a bullish pennant type pattern where there was a rally here then we started consolidating sideways so it's possible that we see a big breakout on heavy volume but the volume has been decreasing right so you can see that volume has really been coming down over here we've only got like what 43 million shares traded today out of an average 73 million so that's a big decrease right so if you do the math 43 divided by 73 that is about 59 percent of the overall average volume right so where, where's the net, where's the other 40 percent right so you're not seeing a lot of volume is that the, is that the case with nvidia too nvidia 36 million traded and 49 million is the average so again you are seeing these lower volume days for these stocks and you know they've been pushing higher so that tells me that there's not a lot of uh, you know, breath behind these moves higher, not a lot of volume that's driving these moves higher. So resistance is going to stay put at about $102, $103. That is going to be the level here. Uh, and of course, support level is going to stay put all the way down to $77, $70 per share for advanced micro devices. Um, next up, we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, what is it, PayPal? And PayPal here is still consolidating sideways, not really moving much. It is flat, only down 0.04%. 9 million shares traded today and just going sideways. Not really moving much, so there's nothing really for us to go over. No updates on PayPal so far. Square um, up about 1.4%. So again, consolidating sideways here. We still do have a very small gap to fill here. And resistance is going to stay put all the way up to $84, $85 per share. And support level stays put at $59 for Square. So those are going to be some levels to watch for this company. And uh, again, it, it is it is a company that is or needs to be profitable in order for us to calculate what that intrinsic value is going to look like for this business uh, but right now you know support at 50 59 and resistance all the way up to 83 dollars per share talking about meta and meta here on the day was up over 77 basis points so getting up to over 214 dollars uh really approaching that resistance so 222 dollars this is a level that i would really be paying attention to for meta very closely because you know it has gotten rejected at that level quite a few uh, times in the past you can see that we did get rejected here a couple times so that would be the next target and support level is going to stay put at 198 close to low 200s for meta talking about netflix and netflix here on the day was slightly lower again this is the entire analysis so my target and resistance stays put roughly at 366 to as much as 380 dollars so those right there are going to be some levels to watch with a support all the way down to 276. The fair value for Netflix is a lot lower than where it's trading at the moment. So right now it's only a tradable stock. For me, it's not going to be anything other than that. Not a long-term investment because of the higher valuation that it trades at at the moment. Talking about Google and Google here continues to push higher. It was actually green. So outperformance here on Google with respect to the market. And uh, the next resistance is going to be at about $108. So this right here is going to be that level to watch for for google and support level is going to stay put at roughly around 101 dollars per share so right now we're just consolidating sideways we broke out came back down to retest that support and now we're starting to move back up next up we've got microsoft and microsoft here on the day was flat again not really doing much but it did get up to as much as 290 so this right here is a resistance for microsoft what i'm really starting to kind of sense is that a lot of stocks are now really getting up to their respective resistance levels and it's just like waiting for this, waiting for this ball to drop, right? I mean, Microsoft at resistance 292, RSI MACD overbought. Apple at resistance uh, at roughly around 166, RSI MACD overbought. 
Nvidia at resistance of 292, RSI MACD overbought. So, I mean, when you've got a lot of individual stocks at these overbought conditions at resistance, there's not really a lot of reason for, for us to be technically optimistic on the market, right? I mean, it's just, it's literally technicals right in front of you. Okay, I'm not, I'm not trying to be bearish or anything, but it's, you know, when you've got three of the largest big tech companies in the S&P 500 overbought and trading at a resistance, you know, it's just, if they start to drop, the markets are going to have no other choice but to pull back with them. And last but not least, we got Shopify. Um, also just consolidating sideways down about 19 basis points. We got a gap to fill here. Still not able to fill that gap, but that would be that next sort of uh, area to fill in. And resistance is going to be at $54. Support level stays put at $41.35. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. Uh, you're definitely going to want to join. You're not going to want to miss that, miss those because I will be posting out the trade ideas. And of course, you get access to all the buy and sell alerts, options alerts, trade ideas, swing trading ideas, and all the other member benefits as well. So once again, thank you so much for joining. As always, happy investing, and I'll see you all in the next video.